Store is a fast one. It begins on the points. Since hand picking cotton is a long and painstaking task, cotton farmers use an iron pick, which harvests as much cotton in five minutes as a human would in a whole day of work. The machine works by using lifters to direct the cotton plant into two rotating drums. Attached to these drums are 560 individual stems covered in bars, which strip the right balls of cotton from their stems. Once full, the accumulator's contents are then emptied into the bailing chamber and rolled into massive round modules for easy transportation. And while these modules look like they're overflowing with rich material, for every ton of waste, there are an extra 1,000 pounds of seeds, 200 pounds of leaves, and only 800 pounds of cotton blend. In order to weed out the true cotton, the bales are sent through a 50s style vintage cotton gin. The machine is responsible for drying and cleaning the sifting out all the unwanted seeds, leaves, and debris through a fine mesh. But nothing goes to waste, as the seeds can be used for cotton and feed. The result is then turned into yet another bale of cotton. Only this one is like more this. cotton than anything like else. Each bale of cotton has enough fiber to produce 325 bales of chips. But before that process can begin, the raw cotton must be transformed into gold. This happens at places like the Denim Art Factory in Pueblo, Mexico. First, because every bale of cotton is slightly different in terms of look and feel, the cotton must be mixed together to create consistently varied fiber strands. This process begins in a blow rate with what is referred to as bale laydown. A machine called the structural blender uses a mechanical arm to pick fibers from the top of the bales. The fibers are then cleaned as they are blown along air ducts into multi-mixers, allowing clean unwanted material to fall out through the bottom of the vents. But the resulting clean, refined fibers still don't exactly look like the thread. So operators use a machine called a DK7 system to perform what is referred to as carding. Carding refers to the process of untying the cotton fibers by combing and pulling them into a ring. The fibers are stretched together to form a thick strand called a slip. Once the slivers are made, six slivers are combined at a rate of 1,500 feet per minute. Then comes a process called spinning. Cotton slivers are pulled and twisted together at a rate of 120,000 rotations per minute. 100 to 250 fibers make up a single thickness of cotton this? thread, and just one ounce of fiber produces a whole mile of fiber. Ah! This new yarn is spun around and twisted into large spindles. What we find on these new reels is something that begins to look like cotton as well, but it's still not blue. In order to make the jeans blue, the cotton must first be dyed. Strangely right. enough, the dye used appears yellow, but it's actually indigo blue dye treated with a reducing agent called sodium hyposulfite. This chemical makes the dye water soluble and also turns it to yellow. But once the cotton is removed from the yellow liquid and exposed to oxygen, it immediately turns blue. Again. But as we know, blue genes fade. That's because the bond between the indigo dye and the cotton is relatively weak, resulting in a color that fades gradually the more the pair is grown. After it is removed from the dye, the thread is treated with cornstarch to make it stiff. It is then dried and ready to use. Denim got its name from a type of French fabric called serge de Nîmes. Nîmes is a city in France, and serge describes the type of ridged fabric made there. Though it appears simply blue, denim is actually a combination white and blue thread blended together to create a variable blue material. As denim is fed into the loom, its threads are blue, one strand of blue to a three strand of blue material. With this blue, each loom turns out 10,000 feet of this blue-white denim every week. 
Chapacan, Mexico, home to Mexico's largest jean factory. The factory produces 400,000 pairs of jeans each month. Typical five pocket jeans use about 15 pieces of cloth, cut 100 layers at a time, from 100 sheets of denim stacked one on top of the other. Computer generated patterns arrange the different sized pieces on a map like diagram to ensure as little material as possible is wasted in the cutting process. Computer operators create these maps and can limit the offcuts to as small as 7%. The decided pattern is then printed on the paper and rolled out on the stack of denim. Using an array of saws, the pieces are cut manually 100 layers at a time using the printed patterns guide. Soon the gene making process begins to resemble a military operation. Each pair of jeans takes 15 minutes to make and requires five feet of denim, several hundred feet of thread, six rivets, and one zipper. Certain styles of jeans must be stretched before they are sent to the store. Jeans are placed on foldable rubber legs and then given a rough hand. In just 60 minutes, a distressing team like makes Jacob? several pairs of jeans look decades old, rounded, fraying edges, sanding in warm patches, and spraying on stains. A high tech laser gun burns creases into certain pairs of jeans, following sets of various computer generated crease patterns. Then, to top off the process, jeans are tossed into a washing machine along with golf. Once dry, they are sufficiently worn and shrunk. Then they are pressed, labeled, and sent out to be sold and worn all over the world. Mom, come here. What? Come here.